So let's grab the little bolts that came with the printer. Well, I guess not the little ones, but the longer ones. And there should be four total, which there are. It looks like there might be an extra one. But they simply go from the bottom up right there and then into the gantry. So let's go ahead and set our gantry on top here. And so there's no real easy way to do this. I mean, you can go kind of off the edge of the table or something, but normally just tilting it over like this and starting it by hand works pretty well. And that's what I'm going to do. Got one, let's do the other. All right, so I got this side started. Now we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. So we can go ahead and tighten this, but I like to run the gantry all the way down. And that way, you know, we have the correct separation between the two channels here on the Z axis. And that just ensures that, you know, we're more closer where we need to be before we tighten this. So, yeah. So we'll go ahead and snug it up reasonably tight. And now we're at the other side. So yeah, simple as that. Our gantry is connected. And that's pretty much the main part of the assembly with this printer is connecting the upper portion to the bottom portion. Now there is more things we need to do. Go ahead and raise this back up a bit. And one of them are installing the bracket for the screen. It looks like it goes right here. So there's a couple bolts that go into the channel and they are in the same bag with the two smaller silver ones. So yeah, now I'm just gonna line it up. Snug them up and we got our bracket. So it looks like our screen would just sit right here and you don't have to, you know, take it off every time. You can just live here obviously. And we can go ahead and plug our connection in into the port here on the printer. So hey guys, you see that there's nothing really too complicated. Everything is pretty much pre-built. Now we do still have the spool holder we need to install. And so the spool holder goes here on the top. Let's go ahead and install this piece. It just simply goes through the hole like this and the nut goes on the other end. We can just turn this part to lock it in. So we do have a couple T-nuts and the way the T-nuts work is they go inside the channel and then they turn like this and lock in. And so in order for it to work, and by the way, there are a couple holes here through the top where you can get down to the bolt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up in there. And so you're gonna unscrew it so the T-nut can drop into the channel and then start tightening it again and it should turn and lock in and sure enough it did. Same thing for this one, you're gonna unscrew it and then tighten it back up. And as long as it's you know centered pretty well, it should turn and lock in. And that's it. And the spool holder's on. Well guys, I just realized that this part here is not correct. It's supposed to go the other way. And the reason for that is because the spool sits on the back side of the printer. And that way it can feed down into the extruder or the detector here than the extruder. So yeah, the spool part pointing to the back. All right, so we do have a few more things to do here. I guess let's go ahead and plug in the wiring. So we can see here that there's a couple wires that need to be plugged in into the gantry parts, which is this Z axis and stop switch and the motor. So the motor is gonna be the bigger plug and they are labeled and says Z on it on both of them. The smaller one goes to the end stop switch. So let's go ahead and plug in the stop and then the motor here. So that's pretty simple. And I believe that's everything that we need to plug in because everything else is plugged in. Now, one thing that we do need to insert is the PTFE tubing here coming out of the extruder. And that goes into this splitter here. So this does have the Y dual extruder splitter. So it basically goes from two tubes to one nozzle. And these honestly are a hit or miss. Some of them work great and others are terrible and they, you know, jam and stuff like that. So we'll see how this printer does. And I hope they got this part figured out. Out. So we're going to insert this one into the one that's pointing closer to itself, which is here on the left side, I guess, if you're looking at it. So that should be good there. And then when we install our second extruder, we're going to plug the PTFE tubing into here. And we'll probably go ahead and install the whole second extruder right away before we power it on and, you know, do all the rest of the stuff is because, you know, obviously we're going to be using it. So, but before we do that, let's go ahead and adjust a few things because the hot end assembly here is completely loose and needs to be adjusted. And we need to check all of our rollers everywhere around the printer to make sure everything is good also on the bed and speaking of the bed let's go ahead and start here so there's some foam pads underneath just pull those out on each side so we do have some nice large knobs to adjust on so what we need to do here is we need to check to see if we got any kind of play and sure enough we do so it does wobble a bit here and there so that means our rollers underneath are loose and sure enough they are so the good part is that there's only four of them so it should be quite easy to adjust so we're going to need our open-ended wrench so it's probably going to be a little hard to see guys but there are four rollers two on each side so there's two that are down adjustable and then two are that are and they have the eccentric nut on it 
So if we go to the ones that are adjustable, maybe you guys can see it. But the best way to do this is stick your hand in there and spin it. So both of my rollers are loose for sure. So what I'm going to do is get the wrench and then turn the eccentric nut to tighten it up. And what you want to do is uh, tighten it to the point where you can spin the roller and it has friction on the rail. So you don't want to tighten it so hard that you can't spin it enough where it doesn't wobble, but not too tight because if it's too tight, it's just going to eat up the little wheels. So this one is perfect in the back. So let's do the one in the front here. So just a little bit is all I needed. And that looks like all we really need. So let's go ahead and move it back and forth. And you want it to be really smooth. So if you feel any kind of jumpiness or jerkiness, check your rollers, make sure they're not too tight. So yeah, mine are definitely perfect now. I can spin it and there's no wobble whatsoever. Now, another thing you wanna check is your belt. So the belt here seems to be okay, but it does seem to be a little bit on the edge there. So the way this thing is mounting, it has a bracket. And sometimes you can just bend this back as you guys can see, it's quite flexible here. So I'm just gonna bend it back just a little bit. And sure enough, that centers it up just where it needs to be. So, you know, this is already like really fine, I guess, tuning. But yeah, just keep in mind, you know, everything is adjustable. Even bending this just a bit already centers the belt. Now, while we're back here, we can go ahead and do these rollers here on the hot end. And you guys can see this thing is completely loose. So on this one on the top, these are stationary and the one on the bottom is adjustable. So we're going to grab a wrench and we're simply just going to turn it until it grabs. So yeah, guys, you just want to adjust as the same way as where you have friction on the rail, but no wobbling of any sort so, or anything funny. It has to be, you know, really solid and smooth. Again, check the smoothness that it's smooth all the way through and there's no funny jumping or anything weird. And again, check your belts, make sure they're lining up pretty well. So everything looks good on mine. Now we do still have these rollers here on each side of the gantry. So there's three on this side and three here. And the inner ones are adjustable, so same way. But this time you want to start on this side where the motor and everything is. So we're going to check these. So same thing here, guys. You just want some friction, but not too much. So these are not as important. Obviously, they're still important, but you just don't want any kind of play, especially on this side, away from the motor and the lead screw. If you don't have much play and everything seems decently well, it should be good right there. Let's go ahead and install the second extruder for the dual color, or I guess a dual material, you could call it, because technically you could use two materials. So we got our main cable, which is pretty long. And there's two plugs, one for the motor and the other for the filament detector. And they literally plug in on this side of the printer, which is kind of interesting that it's like that because I think most of the hardware goes on this side on the top. All right, so let's grab the extruder assembly and we are working with T-nuts. This looks like it's gonna go right here somewhere. Now, the reason I say somewhere is because we got another spool holder here that goes here. So we gotta make enough room for it. So. We can always move it if we don't like where it is later. So yeah, we're just reversing and then tightening and the T-nut turns and locks into the channel. So same thing for this pull holder. We've got a couple T-nuts. So we're gonna set it into the channel and do the same thing. All right, and that should be good right there. So let's go ahead and put on the spool part itself. Again, it's gonna go towards the back. So our nut's gonna go in the front. And that's it. So our spool will go in here and then the filament will go through the detector and then into the extruder and then out of the extruder into the Y splitter. So let's grab one of these PTFE tubings and we'll plug it in into the extruder and the other end into the Y. So simple as that. Now we have a dual feed into one nozzle. So the only part left is to plug it in. So our filament detector is right here in the front. And if we flip around, we can see our motor. And I'm still a little unsure where the wire should be routing, but we'll figure it out here in a second. We'll go ahead and plug in the motor. So since this is stationary with the frame and it doesn't go up and down, we're probably better off going down some channel here and maybe even go inside the channel to make it look nice and clean. Okay, yeah, so it goes in, so that's good. And we can route that, if you guys can see. But yeah, I'm just pushing it inside into the channel. And that's actually going to give us a really nice, clean look here. And we can do this all the way to the bottom. And then from here, we can kind of figure out where to route it. 
and going around doesn't work so I guess we're gonna have to go here through the top now the only thing is we're gonna have to be careful so our wire here doesn't catch on our knobs in any case however you get the wire here to, to the front but we're gonna need to plug it in right here where it says dual so there's a smaller plug and a bigger plug the smaller one is the filament detector and the bigger one is the extruder itself the motor so yeah now we have the whole dual setup installed and ready to go so yeah it looks like everything is good we got everything adjusted we checked everything tightened all the bolts so i guess we are ready to power it on but before we do that let's go ahead and take a closer look at this thing so on the top here we can see we have the two spool holders one of them is the plastic with the logo and the other one's metal so this is the second one with the same kind of plastic holder so here we have the second extruder and what's cool it is the same kind as we saw earlier the dual gear extruder all metal so i like the overall feeling of this printer it's very high quality now one thing i'm not too crazy about is this one channel here and we're going to be putting a lot of weight on the top on a pretty small channel and maybe that's not too big of a deal but if you put two one kilogram rolls on there you know it's a lot of weight on the top and they didn't include any more bracing which i thought maybe would have been nice to have some kind of bracing at least here on the side to keep this thing from being too flexible back and forth i mean it is pretty rigid right now but because the spools are orientated to go this way all of the stress retraction and pulling on the filament is going to go side to side which obviously is very strong this way so so going down from there we can see we got the hot end here and we'll take a closer look at that but over here we got the main extruder we got the filament detector there and our lead screw going down which also holds the x-axis motor here in the whole assembly now the hot end here is very interesting as we do have the y splitter for the dual extruder so we have quite a bit of fans on them we got one here which is a parts cooler and then another parts cooler on this side and then here looks like we have the heat break cooler in the middle looking underneath you can see that our heat block is insulated and also guys i didn't notice this but it looks like this printer does have an auto leveling mechanism it's like a bl touch type sensor there and you guys can see the two openings there for the parts cooling so quite an interesting shroud that it's all encased in so over here we have the x-axis end stop switch and just below that we got the z-axis end stop switch but it is not a mechanical one but an optical one looks like so this piece of metal here goes into this sensor here and that's what stops it so looking down on the bed which we haven't talked about at all but we have this nice logo and it's all kind of patterned out or measured out with these numbers here 210 to 230 to the side here but the official printing volume is 235 by 235 by 265 tall so but the cool part about this thing it is a magnetic sheet so it is a flexible sheet that you can you know bend to pop the models off it is a little bit on the thicker side so it's not as thin as some other ones but it does magnetize here to the aluminum plate and if we look underneath you guys can maybe see those little white parts of the bed there those are actually magnets embedded that make the build material here stick so the bed is heated but it is not insulated as you guys can see we got really nice large knobs for adjustment looks like pretty good springs there pretty thick frame on the bottom for the y-axis we have a 40 40 square rail so that's nice and beefy the y belt it adjusts here on these bolts so if you do need to adjust it if it's not centered mine looks just fine our power on and off switch right here on the top that's quite interesting the manufacturing sticker which tells us the model the wattage the printing volume here the voltages the machine size itself fdm type and the weight which is seven kilograms and uses the 1.75 millimeter pla filament going to the front here you can see that there's nice little caps here on the ends of the channels we have some auto leveling connection here our dual extruder connection which we connected and our laser module connects into there which we will try out a little later in the video and then continuing this way we've got our micro sd slot which is a little hard to get to to be honest it's right next to the channel here so not the ideal place to have it our usb connection if you want to connect to the computer and then we got this port here connection for the display which is pretty cool that the display is actually removable and you can hold it in your hand the only thing i don't like about it is that it does have a little bit of a sharp edge on the back so it's quite uncomfortable to hold but in any case you can remove it it looks like there is a screen protector here let's go ahead and pull that off well maybe multiple because something else okay there's so there's two of them all right going to the right it's pretty clean here and to the left looking at the back of the printer now so i definitely like the build quality of everything it definitely feels on the higher end 
And I do have to give them credit for this extruder that they're using here to dual gear all metal. So very nice. So looking here at the back of the heated bed, we got strain relief for the wiring. So that's very nice. And this is our Y axis in stop switch and the motor, the Z axis motor with the coupler. And on the very bottom here on the back, we got the power input and there's like a little sticker over it. So it is fused. So that's nice. Let's go ahead and pull this off. And as we're pulling it, we can see that we have an opening here and that is for the voltage selection between the 230 and the 115. So I don't know if you guys can see, but mine is on 230 right now and that is not the correct voltage. So I need to switch it. And before you plug it in and turn it on, make sure you switch that to the voltage that is correct in the country that you live in. Now I do like how they leave it on 230 instead of the 115 because for us here, if it's left on 230 and we turn it on, it probably just won't work or just do funny things. But if you're in Europe where there's 230 standard and it was on the lower voltage, it could damage the power supply or, you know, scare you with a big pop or something. So yeah, make sure you check your voltages before you power this thing on. All right, so for the next part, let's go ahead and power it on and see what happens. So I got it plugged in in the back. Let's hit the power switch. All right, do you hear it? Okay, so it does pull up here on the screen. And there it goes, looks like it's booted up. And that's kind of cool how I can just grab the whole interface here. It looks like we have the mode on the top. It does say double extruder, so I guess it knows since we're plugged in that we have the second extruder there. So it's in that mode. So below that we got the print button. So once you got that SD card installed, you should be able to read it. And then we got control and settings. Let's click on settings here and see what they got. So we got about, so this is about the printer. The language, so this is all the available languages. And then we got status, so this is the status of the printer right now. And then continue, which there's nothing to continue, so this is power loss resume feature here. All right, so let's go to control. So, so here we can preheat it, move it, zero it out, extrusion, out of leveling, fan, stop everything, and then we have some settings for the sound. Okay, so we can turn it on, and whenever we click anything here, we can hear clicking. All right, so let's go to move and click on home. I'm guessing that's the middle one there. And see, make sure all of our axes work. So I'm gonna click the middle there. It looks like X, Y, and then Z going down. All right. On the bottom here, we have extruder one and extruder two. If we click on it, we can choose between the two. So for the next part, let's go to preheat. So we have options here for PLA, ABS, and then we can go up and down on temperature manually if we want with these settings here. And we have a stop for everything. So let's click on PLA and automatically preheat the nozzle there. And if we click on the here, we can see it goes to the second nozzle, which obviously we don't have a second nozzle. And then the bed itself. And here we can manually set it to what we want. So let's just go to, I guess, 60 to start off with. All right, so the nozzle's at 200 and the bed is at 37. So yeah, heating up pretty quick. So yeah, it seems like everything is working. So that's great. So as that's preheating, we should go ahead and go to the bed leveling. So let's click on it. So here we have some options. We can have an offset, which is at zero right now, and then out of bed leveling, manual leveling, and then plus and minus. So that's for the offset. So what you want to do in the beginning before you do out of bed leveling is you want to manually level the bed. So I'm going to click on M and it gives me five boxes of four of the corners in the center. So let's start with corner number one one here and it goes straight to there now you remember you want to have your bed preheated so it's nice and hot so I'm just gonna use a posty note right off the bat I can see that we're definitely too high on it so we're gonna adjust the knob here on the bottom to get close and so we just want a little slight drag between the nozzle and the bed so let's go to corner two same thing here here we're too loose so we're gonna go up a bit so yeah once it's close we're gonna go to the next one so we are manually adjusting it, but you know, we do have assistance from the software here that brings us to each corner. So yeah, this is our first pass. Let's go around one more time. And the reason we want to do that is because you want to get it pretty close. And now we'll go to the middle and see what that looks like. And that's actually pretty good. All right, so now that we did the manual bed leveling, we can go ahead and go back and do the auto leveling. So let's click on that. Let's see what it does. So you guys can see it's using the little pin to measure the bed. So it's taking measurements throughout the whole bed. 
and then it's going to, you know, auto adjust it as it prints. All right, so now it went to the center and it's letting us do the offset. So we're going to grab our little paper here and we're going to either go up or down. So it looks like I need to go down. So I'm going to click on minus, I think. Let's see. Nope, that's incorrect. I need to click on the plus. So that makes it go down. So I'm just going to keep clicking it, the plus, until, okay, yeah, I'm too tight now. So I'm going to back off just a bit. And I am on the 0.01 setting. And that actually feels about right. Maybe a little less, so yeah. So my offset is going to be 0.4 from where it was. So yeah, now we should be finished with the leveling process. So for the next part, let's install some filament. So let's bring this whole Z-axis up a bit. So we're gonna use this side of the spool holder. And so our filament is gonna go out this way and then down into the filament detector and then through the extruder here. You guys probably can't see that. But yeah, I'm just pushing it through the extruder here by releasing the arm and maybe you can see the filament inside the PTFE tubing, the green filament. And I'm gonna go ahead and push it all the way down into the hot end and we should start purging out. And you guys can see it's kind of coming out, but we can go here and click on extrusion. Then we have nozzle one and two. I think we need one here. And then we can choose how much we want. Let's say 10 millimeters. So I'm going to click on load and it's going to push out that much. So then you guys can see, push it some more. It's going to purge it out. I mean, it's simple enough just to push it by hand technically. Yeah, looks like we're ready to go, guys. We got everything leveled, the filament loaded. So let's grab our little micro SD card and we'll plug it into the port. It looks like it does go upside down. We'll click on print and see if we can find something to print here. So we got quite a few folders in here. Let's click on this model folder. Monochrome, I think, is what we need. So we have a lucky cat, a dog, and a crocodile. I guess let's do, since we got green, the crocodile. Confirm. Okay, so here we go. We're starting up. And it does appear that we are pretty good distance off the bed from what I can tell. All right. It is going a little bit quick for the first layer, but the distance seems to be good. All right, well, yeah, it doesn't seem to be any kind of issues. Not that I can tell. It is going a little too quick on the first layer, but that's okay, I guess. It seems to be all sticking. So let's see what we got here on the controller. So we got the file on the top, percentage that it's done, which is zero for now. The time that it took since started, two minutes. The bed temperature, the nozzle temperature, the second nozzle, which obviously we don't have. That looks like the speed 100%. And then the Z axis is at 0.3 millimeters right now from the bottom where it started. And then we got control, stop, and pause. So we can pause the print and we can completely cancel it by clicking stop here. Control, so let's click on that. So it looks like we can do temperature, fan speed and extrusion and we also get all these parameters here if we want to you know look at this so let's see here speed we can go down to 80 percent and that will slow it down probably we'll go back change that to 100 but yeah looks like we got pretty good controls but yeah guys if you hear some kind of cricking here <laughs> something's happening inside the hot end okay seems like to go away or something seems to be either vibrating or maybe the fan is catching on something. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but okay. So it has to do some of these wires when I touch them a bit, it seems to stop. So there must be a wire somewhere in there that's touching the fan. Maybe the only thing I can think of. Okay. Well, we're going to have to print through this one, I guess with the noise that it has. And then I'll check it out once we're done with our first print. All right. So our alligator is already at 4%. So it's boogieing along. I think it'll be finished here pretty quick. And uh, we'll see what that looks like. And actually, the buzzing went away completely, which is really odd. I'm going to let you guys hear it. Super quiet printer. I definitely like that about it. All right. So, yeah, everything looks good. I'm just going to let it print out. We're pretty excited to see what our first print will look like. All right, guys, so our little alligator is done and everything turned out pretty good, looks like, except for one of his feet pulled up, but it was going a little too fast there in the beginning, in my opinion. So yeah, our display says here that it's done and it took, actually says one hour and one minute, so pretty quick. Confirm that. So let's go ahead and see how well this plate works. And as I was trying to pull it up, 
the alligator just popped right off. So yeah, that didn't take much effort there. Guess we'll put this back. So looking at the bottom of it, it does appear that we're pretty good, but I think we need to get a little closer to the bill plate. I think that'll help. Part of the reason probably one of the feet here came off maybe. But if we look at the print itself and the way the layers are sitting, uh, yeah, that's pretty impressive actually. So everything looks very smooth and uniform. So yeah, very good start here on our first print with this alligator. Now since we are in dual color mode right now, I think we should go ahead and put this other spool into the second extruder. And we got this pretty nice orange color. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to controls and preheat the nozzle and go ahead and preheat the bed also. So we're gonna do the same thing here on this other extruder. Release the arm and push our filament through. So I'm just gonna manually push it all the way down until it gets right over here and I'm not gonna go deeper in there because I don't want to jam anything so let's go ahead and go to print and see if we can find a dual print model in here so we got bicolor g-code and there are two of them there's a dragon and traffic warning so I'm not sure what those are so I guess let's go with the traffic warning confirm so we started that and this should be a dual color print here now remember we are using just one nozzle for both of the extruders. So it looks like it just purged there a bunch. And there it goes. It is printing a round circle there. So I don't know if this is part of the purge, but I think the way the dual color works, at least in this configuration, is that it's gonna have to make some kind of purge block on the side. So this would be quite interesting to see what kind of print we get. So whatever this traffic warning post is, I guess we'll see. Once it gets a little farther down into the print, I'll show you guys how it changes color. So it's changing color right now. You guys can see or not, but it pushed out the green. And now pushing in the orange. And then purging, which is where it's at right now. So it's building like a separate wall there, or purge wall block. And then the print is to the left where it's going right now and I guess this is a traffic cone is what it is so yeah it appears to be doing just fine switching between the two colors so I'm just gonna let it print out and uh, we'll see what it comes out of it All right, so our first color print is done and it actually took two hours and 54 minutes. So right at three hours, now that's not too bad. And we can see here we got the purge block, the extra filament that it needed to change between the two colors. So let's see this time if we can maybe pull it off without it breaking loose itself. All right. And also, if you guys can see maybe around the cone, there's like another layer here around it. That's actually to keep it from blobbing. There's little blobs on it. Maybe you guys can see. Anyways, let's see if we can flex it. Okay, so yeah, it seems to be cutting loose pretty easily. Okay, so the cone is off, and the purge block also came off pretty good. Had a pretty large brim here. But yeah, everything comes off really easy off of this build plate. So yeah, so far so good with this thing. So this outer layer should just come right off. And sure enough, it does. And this is what our model looks like. And the color separation looks pretty much perfect, I would say. Very nice. So yeah, except for this blob here that happened. I'm not sure what was going on there that was on the first layer. I think what happened was you got to start the filament right at the tips here. But the green was already all the way down through. And I think that made it blob out. So I would say so far, this printer is doing very well. I definitely like how the layers are going down. 